Hello, hello. Welcome to another Whiskey Me live tasting. Um, you may notice that we're in a different location to usual um, and with a different person, which we'll, we'll come to in a second. Um, uh, unlike, I think, the last six months, this is the first live tasting uh, we've done that isn't in my house, um, which means that lockdown is over. Yay. Um, and we're actually in a very special place um, because this is Black Rock Whiskey Bar. Uh, in London, which is the bar that Tom here and I co-own. And Tom is a special guest today, very special because he's the co-founder of Whiskey Me. I am indeed. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's my first time, as you'll know, uh, joining the tasting. I'm normally, actually my days are normally spent replying to uh, member emails. And I'm sure there's a few of you that will be joining us tonight that have had the pleasure of having communication with me in the past. So. I do love whiskey. Obviously, I'm a whiskey enthusiast, and it's great to be uh, involved in this tasting with Tris. Um, and yeah, just re really looking forward to getting involved. I hope you guys enjoyed this month's dram. If you've tasted any of it so far, or if you've not, then we're going to take you through a bit of a tasting uh, of that just now. You normally tune into these, don't you? Yeah, I'm always, I'm always normally in the background, and I'm always normally uh, either commenting or liking the comments that we get. And uh, at the very beginning, when we were refining the process, normally text message interest and with the questions that come through so that we can actually get answers to them but this time I'm here. Now I've got better at kind of dual talking and reading comments at the same time so um, but anyway this tour is nice so yeah, we can probably do this properly. Um, so a uh, little bit of housekeeping first um, we want to give you an update on the glasses um, and uh, Tom's going to do that yeah. because Tom's, Tom's basically been the one that has been hounding suppliers trying to get these glasses organized as quickly as possible basically sweating every single day um trying to get <laughs> trying to get things moving on it's been a, a tough old road it's, 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 it's been challenging it's been a bit more difficult than i think we first anticipated in in terms of logistics and so firstly obviously i want to apologize for, for anyone that's not received the glass yet um people are receiving them. people are receiving them and rest assured they are all um either out or going to be heading out this week i, I hate to make excuses or blame uh but we've, we've had some real issues with royal mail um, and their logistics in effectively getting them to come and collect uh you know well over a thousand glasses as you can imagine it's not easy to get them all collected in one go and so what we've been doing is systematically sending out um smaller quantities manually so that at least we can get the glasses uh you know starting to be sent out from last week this was and i'm confident uh that i have all of the glasses being collected in the next couple of days and so i can put my neck on the line and guarantee that all the glasses will be sent out or on their way next week early next week if not before so apologies for that it's been yeah it's been tricky but they are they are coming and uh, i have tried to respond to any email queries that have come through to, to keep you guys updated as well so thanks for your patience so if you haven't got your glass already then by the time we next do a live stream you will definitely have it um, and if you don't, then you, you, blame me. you know where Tom is now. He's at Black Rock in London. Uh, he'll be waiting here for you to come down and um, and physically attack him. Indeed. <laughs> um, so without further ado, let's get on with um, today's tasting. So we are at Royal Brackler Distillery. Um, hopefully you guys have got your whiskey ready to taste if you haven't tasted it already. Um, and let's talk a little bit about this distillery. We didn't bring in a sort of expert from the brand this month because we've got Tom who knows all sorts of stuff about whiskey um, and both of us have been to the distillery haven't we? Yeah. so um, we are familiar with it personally and it's let's start a bit of the history because it's got quite a cool history I mean first of all Royal Brackler what's that all about um, it does indeed have a royal warrant from uh, the, the crown and that was it was the first distillery to be granted a royal, royal warrant back in 1833 Oh my God, the phone's ringing. <laughs> um, I think we'll ignore that. Yeah, we'll ignore So it's the first distillery to be granted a warrant back in 1833. And um, there have subsequently been two other distilleries that have uh, received a warrant. One, one of them being Royal Lucknagar, which is another distillery that we've previously featured. And we did a video on that one. Um, another great distillery, in fact. And the other one is a lesser known distillery uh, called Glenuri Royal. Um, and Glenuri Royal actually closed its doors about 50 years ago. If you can get hold of a bottle of Glenuri Royal, you're doing really, really well. Um, in fact, the liquid is so highly prized now that it ends up in super expensive bottlings like um, Johnny Walker Blue Label Ghost and Rare, which is a, a bottling of Blue Label that features only distilleries that have closed. So um, highly regarded distillery, as is Royal Lochnagar, as is 
uh, Royal Brackler. Now, Brackler is located in the parish of Cawdor, which sounds a little bit Lord of the Rings to me, um, not to be confused with Mordor. It's much nicer, although in the winter, you probably get similar amounts of daylight to Mordor. Uh, it does get pretty gloomy up there. And Cawdor is actually named after the castle. Um, there's an car old castle there that was built in the 15th century. Um, and that castle previously owned kind of all of the grounds in the area of the distillery situated. Um, and the castle's famous for the fact that it appears in Macbeth. Um, in fact, Macbeth um, gets the title of the Nairn of Cawdor. Um, that, that's his position, that's why he's there. Um, though Macbeth's obviously a work of fiction, and, and in fact, the story is set in the 11th century, so we shouldn't take too much reference to, to, the, to that castle. But Cawdor's a lovely area, um, the distillery's located there, and um, the, it was first founded by Captain William Fraser back in about 18, 1812. 1812, yeah. And he was a military man, of course. Yeah. yeah. Toured around the place, uh, spent a bit of time over in India. And then when he finally retired on his army pension, he bought up uh, the grounds there that he owned at, at Cawdor. Um, and during that time, there was a lot of illegal distilling still going on. So um, when one of the acts that attempted to kind of make uh, legal distilleries legitimate was passed in 1816 he took the opportunity to kind of kick all these illicit distillers off his ground and open his own distillery and Brackler was born. Brackler I think in Gaelic um, means something like spotted hill okay which is a bit weird to me because uh, we've been there and I don't know what your kind of take on it was but it's not I actually very hilly at all. No it's pretty <laughs> no, flat it is. Um, which is why there was once an RAF base there as well so during the second world war um, their an RAF base operated just on the field that's kind of adjacent to the distillery. And if you look over the wall there at the distillery, you actually see a, a few sort of bits of flat tarmac still knocking around. And that's um, the remnants of the old RAF base. So why on earth they chose Spotted Hill? I don't know, because I saw no spots and no hills. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's a great distillery. It's actually a beautiful distillery. It's stunning, yeah. No, it, it is beautiful. Um, the, other thing, the only other thing I'd say traditionally about Bracca really is that um, you know, for a very long time, well, for, for 100 years or more, uh, Bracca have been producing whiskies primarily for blends. Um, so, you know, we often, Tristan and I, uh, over the years, we've had conversations numerous times around, and I think Tristan's mentioned on it previously in other tastings, around the sort of, uh, you know, the general thought around blends versus single malts. Um, and it's always good to sort of, you know, link back to the fact that a lot of these amazing single malts that we're tasting now are used in blends. And uh, Bracla particularly, primarily, even now, is used in blended whiskey, uh, do us particularly. But fortunately for, fortunately for us, um, I think it was 2015, they released uh, the 12-year-old, 16-year-old, and I think it was a 21-year-old yeah. um, as a single malt. And but going back, you know, going back to the uh, the beginnings of the Brackler Distillery, um, one of the things I think that stands out as a way that it became popular and probably led to the Royal Warrant being granted was that Captain William Fraser was one of the first people to effectively ship his whiskey from Inverness to London um, in the early early nineteenth century, which obviously opened up a huge market uh, for the whiskey from the Bracula distillery and getting it into the hands of a lot of the, uh, I guess, the, the wealthy wealthy people of London drinking whiskey at the time, which would have led on to or at least contributed towards it being uh, widely renowned at that time as a fantastic quality dram, um, as it is today. And it, yeah, it's a, a dram that Tristan and I both, both yeah, love. I don't think anyone actually knows for sure how he got the Royal Warren. Like, there's there's... There may be, the, you know, there's some brown envelopes exchanged hands under under tables in, in in nice kind of gentlemen's clubs in London. I mean, he had the military connection, so there might be something in that kind of little route in. Um, but what, a, like that, that would be a serious advantage, right? In that time to be able to say, I mean, I think they marketed it as the King's Whiskey uh, back in the 1830s. And you know, what whiskey are you going to buy? Something else or the King's Whiskey? Yeah. I buy the King's one because it sounds pretty good. So. Um, yeah, the distillery setting, as I say, right next to these flat fields with the with the old RAF base. There's two wonderful great ponds out the front, two great lakes, and these are you see these at a few different distilleries. And what it is is it's the water that's used to cool the condensers on the stills. So they sort of lay all this water out in long, shallow ponds, and then they can pump it into the still house, um, and it will be used to condense the spirit vapor back into liquid. And it's a if you stood in the still house, you've got these massive great 
opening windows that kind of roll up on uh, roll up and then you're looking out over these ponds and there's lots of wildlife around there as well i remember when i was so i was there about six years ago um and i saw otters running around in front of the still house um and the the still manager there who was telling me that you often see them they jump in the water and grab the trout out and then just run off with it um and go about their business um and it and it that makes it a really nice setting because you've got this beautiful view out in between the stills you know with all that heat coming off the copper and then the cold air coming through the window um it's it's super nice so we've talked enough probably shall we drink yeah we should we should probably crack into it so if you have your pouch in front of you now if you just want to if you haven't already i'm sure you probably a few of you have already uh pour some of this dram so 12 years old it's finished in sherry casks i'll tell you something for um for you all right you're having quite a lot aren't you <laughs> oh you're off the drink yeah, yeah everybody. <laughs> um when i was there i so when i was there six years ago they had no product at the distillery to try because th these things weren't bottles the, the distillery did not bottle anything there were independent bottlers people who would buy barrels of whiskey um you know off the off the distillery and and, and sell it and you know under their own brand at, you know whatever age statement it is so all i got to taste on that day was the new make spirit so straight off the still undiluted um you know around about 70 percent alcohol um sickle late 60s um, and, and completely unaged. And it's quite nice to taste new make because you really get an impression of what sort of style of spirit the distillery is making, what it smells like, what it tastes like, you know, what that that kind of canvas is upon which the barrel is going to kind of paint its own own qualities. And I remember distinctly that it really smelled quite grassy and very much of like blackcurrant leaves. It had this really juicy, um, ripe blackcurrant characteristic to it, along with a kind of grassy quality. Um, and uh, yes, Craig, it was crazy, none to taste, but that's what you get sometimes. Thanks for joining. Um, right, so have a smell and see what you get. What are you getting, Tom? Um, I am getting, I'm getting some jammy notes, mm. some uh, sort of buried jam, raspberry, strawberry jam in there. Quite sweet, a little bit floral notes even. Um, yeah. Very rich. I mean, the the obviously the Oloroso, Oloroso sherry cask is always going to lend um, lend itself to these, you know, what you might typify as these sort of stewed fruit type notes. Mm. Um, you know, raisin sort of dark raisin plum sweetness. A little bit of chocolatey and you know, something like that. I mean, it, this is a reasonably young whiskey, but I quite like this when you get this sort of subtle sherry finish to quite a youthful whiskey. And then you get this lovely battle playing out between those kind of grassy, ripe kind of, you know, whether it's slows or damsons or black currants, these sort of juicy dark fruits. Um, and then you start to get these layers of, like you say, more cooked jamminess, maybe dried stone fruits, maybe a little bit of just, you know, sherry characteristic over the top. A bit of, um, a bit of coffee as well, sort of coffee, cocoa yeah. type character. Yeah. Well, it's so, well balanced, no? It's very well uh, balanced. Very, I mean, I would say, um, you know, through the benefit of having tasted this whiskey, obviously prior to this tasting, I'd say that it's actually a fantastic whiskey as an introductory whiskey for people that, you know, if you if, if there are people that want to uh, begin their journey in whiskey or want to get into whiskey, I think it's got a great balance to it. I think the, you know, it has that really nice sort of sweetness, the fruity element, I think is really accessible um, and pleasant. It's got a long finish, it's viscous. I, again, I'm, I'm gonna get stuck into it in a minute, but it's viscous, it's heavy on the palate. Um, but it's so complex. Um, there's a lot going on there. So, uh, you know, just a lovely, lovely drum. It's super juicy. Um, that's my take from it. I think, you know, as a 12 year old, it's really up there amongst some of the best 12 year olds in Scotland. Mm. It, it really is. Yeah, I was once, um, a, a very good friend of mine who's also into whiskey once said, when tasting whiskey, that you should allow it at least one second on the palate per year that it's been aged. And it's always something that I try to, try to do when i'm tasting whiskey if any of you want to you know look to really open up some of the deeper notes and deeper characteristics of the whiskey just hold it on the palate for 12 seconds wash it around like a mouthwash almost um and then swallow it and breathe in and it will really open up some of the deeper layers in that whiskey um yeah it's sort of when you do that it kind of like burns it onto your tongue doesn't yeah, it yeah. the flavor seems to last longer because you've held it there and you know, just the alcohol just drills these kind of characteristics right down onto your taste buds. 
And then when you get that breath of air come through, because you're holding it in your mouth, you don't actually get that much flavor during that time when you're holding, because you're not able to breathe properly and allow that air in your mouth to go up through, through your, and out through your nose. So it's when you eventually open your mouth and take that breath, and suddenly you get this rush of flavor, um, and it's pretty cool. Mm. I don't even want to do it with every sip, because you look, no. like a bit of a, <laughs> look like a bit of a lunatic. Just something to consider. Uh, just something to consider when we're doing the tasting. Also, this is... Oh, I'm getting dried apricot, man. Yeah, yeah really, like dry, that, that's that sherry note coming through. Yeah. It's also bottled at 40%, um, which means that obviously it's a fantastic dram to drink at bottling strength. Um, you know, obviously it will it will change with a drop of water, but equally so, it can be consumed um, at bottling strength at 40%, and it will give you that sort of that heavy richness on the palate as well. Yeah. Um, so, we got any any tasting notes from you guys that you want to share? How's everyone finding it? There's some whiskey heavyweights on this particular mm. one I can see in the comments so I'm sure they've got something to say maybe everyone's holding it for the maybe they got maybe they heard you wrong they're holding it for like 12 minutes yeah could, that could be it yeah <laughs> no excuse not to tap into the uh, keyboard though. that's true yeah 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 that apricot note's really coming through for me no uh, glorious. glorious well that's pretty good uh, yeah every description it is so good yeah it is yeah, I mean, thinking about obviously, um, you know, liquid versus value as well. You know, a, a bottle of whiskey that comes in retail around sort of fifty or just over fifty pound a bottle, for the, you know, the again the, the sort of depth and the richness to it is really really quite special, um, I think at least. And it's the sort of whiskey for me personally that I would, I would actually take it around to to share with friends, even if I had, uh, you know, certain friends that weren't necessarily into whiskey. I think it's a really good sort of crowd pleasing drab you keep talking about your friends i i've i've yet to see these people what about you oh <laughs> you're the only one. Oh, you're one yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 sorry <laughs> no, 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 no. um what i tell you what impresses me is that you know sometimes people get a little like fetishized age a little bit and complexity they think the two are kind of one and the same but for me this as a 12 year old whiskey has an enormous amount of complexity even the finish is pretty good, but all these kind of juicy fruits and dried fruits and grassy qualities, it's it's all there. Like, yeah. yeah, it's probably probably a combination of the obviously the production process from the fermentation and distillation and all being sort of built around quite a light uh, sort of light grassy almost floral spirit, mm. but then the interaction of cask and also the oloroso that kind of the contrast quite heavily, don't they? These sort of really light grassy delicate elements, then with this sort of rich. Mm rich fruitiness that you get from the Oloroso and sherry cask mm. and it and it does just balance perfectly like you say it's probably the sort of whiskey that if you left it in there even six months or a year longer you might lose uh the underlying character that you get from the actual distillate you're gonna think it's a distillery character yeah i mean it is a it is a soft distillery character like i said it's grassy little bit sort of berry fruits but um the i know the second distillation so you have two distillations in single malt whiskey sometimes three but usually two that second distillation is quite long and drawn out at brackler um, i think it's over 10 hours from start to finish they wouldn't be collecting spirit that whole time so that means you're getting a lot of copper contacts in yeah. the still which is sort of purifying the whiskey really it's cutting out sulfurous notes and just sort of really amplifying these more subtle, fruity, grassy notes that are desirable in the end product. And so what you end up with is this really sort of um, uh, like a, a, a highly refined new make spirit um, that then has that opportunity to play with the wood and play with the sherry yeah. cask and produce something really exceptional. So what have we got here? Um, we've got the raspberry jam, very good malt, yeah. better than the 12 year old provenance, yeah, okay. Which is an independent bottling of this. It's actually got um, going back into it. Obviously, after nosing it, tasting it for five minutes. If you go back into it, I, I'm actually starting to find on the nose particularly. It's almost got a, a sort of cream soda type element to it, um, like a strawberry cream soda mm -hmm. or something like that. Where you've got the, you do actually get a lot more. I think when going back to it, the sort of uh, vanilla notes. American yeah, notes the American note, the American note notes on the nose particularly. Have you tried drinking straight from the pouch? Because that's actually another way <laughs> of way. assessing the whiskey. No. Just go straight from the pouch. Mm. Totally different experience, right? Yeah, no nose. <laughs> no <laughs> nose. You don't bother nosing it. You could get you, you end up sucking it up your nose if you do that. Especially. 
<laughs> Luckily, you can't see me from side on. I have a, have a rather large nose. All right, Rod Kent, my father-in-law, is saying um, tremendous depth of flavour. This is it. Such a crowd pleaser, this whiskey. I don't think there's anything to not like in it. No, no, genuinely. Um, um, okay, cool. Well, look, any more comments, then by all means, um, go. Well, Jamie, okay, all right, well, we get the, we get the message. Um, any more comments, then by all means, leave it on the comments, because um, they will stay there on Facebook, and you can continue discussing it long after this video is gone. And anyone who's not watching live, then by all means, add your comments uh, to the tasting, and we will always look back and see what people like and what they yeah. don't, and it will probably, in some way, influence our future yeah. choices. The only thing, yeah, it will, definitely. The only thing I would say is that we've, um, Obviously, every whiskey that we put out each month is exciting and they're all fantastic drafts, but we've got something uh, quite particularly quite special oh, yeah. coming up in October. Can you give um, any more of a... I'm not going to give any hints away uh, at all. Um, but we can what, say something that no one's had before. What, what I will say is it's, it's almost certainly something that nobody has had before. Um, it is pretty much an exclusive um, and it's something that we're super, super excited to be able to, to share with you guys. So, um, and the, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll look to draft in for next month's tasting a few of the guys from the distillery, the brand as well, because it is something super, super, super new, super exciting. And, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. But as usual, thanks for your support. Thanks for joining us and, um, yeah, continue with the questions. And once we've finished the tasting, I'll try and respond if I can to any queries that you've got um by here yeah all right thanks everyone so much for tuning in guys we will see you roughly this time next month and uh we'll catch you later Bye -bye. cheers